So when we think of this word trail, we imagine a mark or a series of signs or objects left behind by the passage of someone or something, like a trail of clues on the floor, left for investigation. Sorry for being so dramatic, but the topic that we're going to discuss today involves you and me and a little bit of analysis and either of us could be the culprit. Thanks for joining in for today's session on AWS and let's talk about AWS Cloud Trail. So if you're ready, let's investigate. And in today's session, we will try and understand Cloud Trail and why is it important. And we'll obviously check out how does Cloud Trail work and how, what can we analyze using Cloud Trail's data and what are the basic features that we have for Cloud Trail. And we'll also compare both CloudWatch and CloudTrail and we'll see what are the differences that we have. And we'll also do a small hands-on demo for CloudTrail. And the timelines are also given in the description below, so please check them out. And before starting this, if this actually turns out to be a bigger session, then I'll divide them into two parts. So the first part will be the theoretical part and the second part will be having the whole full-fledged demo. So please don't miss out on either of these videos. So if you have watched this and uh, if the demo is already out, then please make sure that you watch out the demo as well. So now let's start. Now, when we start the investigation, we always follow the trail of clues, isn't it? So there is a path where we keep moving forward and eventually find the proof of the defector, which is basically our culprit, isn't it? So the real question here is who is doing what? And the reason is to try to catch the culprit. And let's see if CloudTrail can help us find who is doing what. So as I told you before, when we think of the word trail, we imagine a mark or a series of signs or objects left behind by the passage of someone or something. So when we combine both of these terms, cloud and trail, we must understand there will be a situation while working in cloud platforms where things might fail or there could be sudden altercations to permissions or authentication, which could affect the way things work. And the peculiarity of these issues could be that you might need to have the proper data of the person who actually made the changes. So if you imagine the scale at which the infrastructure would be in the production environment, you would be eating your heads away trying to find out who did what. Who is the person which actually made the changes? Like who gave the permissions for S3 to this EC2 instance? And like who is the person who gave admin permissions to this user? These things might look very small, but when it comes to resource critical problems, you could get fired if you get caught making mistakes that could impact the customer. No, you won't get fired, obviously, but you get the seriousness of the context, isn't it? And if I have to put all the above in a slightly more complicated way, then listen to this very carefully. AWS CloudTrail is a service that enables governance, compliance, operational auditing, and risk auditing of your AWS account. Remember that, AWS account. So eventually, what does this mean? So whenever you read something like AWS CloudTrail is a service, so if this is a service, then you need to either enable it to use it or use its features or else it's already running and you need to capture the information it is providing us. Okay, so there may be two situations in this one. Now, I think all of you will try and recall whenever you read this statement like this is a service. So when you read something like this is a service or CloudTrail is a service, CloudWatch is a service, you must relate to that. So this will be a type of feature which you need to enable to make use of it. And whenever you hear about the term audit in the exam, like which service helps you with auditing in your AWS account, think of CloudTrail. Okay, remember this very carefully. Now let's see the process of CloudTrail that we have here. Just like in CloudWatch, I told you before about the four pillars. Here as well, we have four pillars. The first one is capture, the second one is store, the third one is act, and the fourth one is review. First, we capture the activity that takes place in the AWS services with CloudTrail events. So these will be our data points that we capture. So these can be like AWS services in the sense like it could be your AWS account. So whatever is going in your AWS account, it will be captured. So those will be our data points. 
Secondly, we need to store it somewhere so that we can make use of it. So we store the CloudTrail events to dedicated S3 buckets or we can use CloudWatch logs as well. The third is to act. So we can make use of CloudWatch events and alarms to take actions based on the data points that we have. So this is similar to what we exactly have done before while we have used CloudWatch. So I think you can relate to this. Last but not the least, a review. So here in CloudTrail, we can push the CloudTrail events to S3 buckets and we can make use of AWS Athena to analyze the logs. So when you have followed these pillars and enabled CloudTrail, it will help you with first compliance audit. So with a compliance audit, you have access to information needed to demonstrate that AWS resources were managed according to the rules and regulatory standards. And then with resource lifecycle tracking, you can track an AWS resource from creation to deletion, like who created the resource, what are the changes that were made to the resource, what permissions were given or removed from the resource and ultimately if it was deleted. The next thing is operational troubleshooting. So this is also very similar. You can identify the most recent changes made to the resource in your environment and who exactly did that. And then we have security analysis. Here you can see which user activities failed due to inadequate permissions. So this is something that is most widely used in AWS accounts to resolve errors with permissions. So now that we have some idea about how the pillars function, let's see how we can make use of CloudTrail. But I want to reiterate this in the exam or in general when it comes to the term audit or compliance or security audit, the service that we make use is CloudTrail. Now let's move on. You know what, there is a line in the documentation that I really enjoyed reading and it reads, do you have the need to track the API calls from one or more AWS accounts? If so, the new AWS CloudTrail service is for you. Remember this and read it once again or once or twice. This is a really good statement to summarize what CloudTrail actually does for us. Now let's start. Remember this very carefully, every action that takes place on AWS in your account will be monitored. Okay, I'll repeat this once again. Every action that takes place on your AWS account will be monitored. The only thing that you do is enable the service to help you store the data points in a safe place so that it can be validated and reviewed and audited later in the future. So when we use CloudTrail, remember that all the calls made to the AWS APIs using the AWS Management Console, the AWS Command Line Interface, that is a CLI, or your own applications or third-party software will be recorded by the CloudTrail. And that actually publishes the log files to Amazon S3 buckets of your choice. So you can create your own S3 bucket or while you're creating a CloudTrail, AWS also can create a designated bucket for you. So that's not something that you need to worry about. And with any action taking place, the log files are generated and it can be stored on S3. And a very important thing here is that CloudTrail can also send notifications to SNS topics and you can also view the logs on the console. So these are the three main options that we have. So you have AWS Management Console, you have the AWS SDK applications, you have the AWS CLI, and we have the CloudTrail functionality here, which actually stores the data points in the designated buckets, or it can create SNS topics, or you can view them in the Management Console as well if you want to do some debugging. And these are some of the services that CloudTrail logs APIs for. So we have uh, EC2, this, these are very popular services, isn't it? So we have VPC, we have EBS, we have EC2, we have the relational database service that we have, that is RDS, we have the identity and access management, IAM, we have the STS, security token service, we have Redshift, and we have CloudTrail. And there are other services that uh, CloudTrail has recently added that you can see in the documentation as well. So once you have the log files stored in the S3 bucket, you can use AWS Athena to query them and take action on that and as well as create CloudWatch alarms. And the best part is that once you get the logs, you can as well use third-party analytics applications from our AWS partners. And that's something that I really like. So now let's see and understand what can you analyze with CloudTrail's data. So the first question that we will get the answer for when using CloudTrail is, what actions did a given user take over a specified time period? Yes, that's right. We need the answers while auditing as to when this resource was created, who and when these permissions were changed, 
who deleted and when the resources were deleted and based on that we can get a lot of information so these are the things that are really important when we are doing security audits so the second one is for a given resource which aws user has taken action on it over a given time period we can see who has created this s3 bucket who created replications for s3 we can see who created this ec2 instance or deleted the instance and these questions can be answered and for a period of time and the third one is what is the source ip address of a particular activity so this is very important because the source ip tracking makes it easy to take actions or uh, either to either whitelist or blacklist not just the user but as well as the side block as well and obviously the source ip determines the instance that made the request so it is very very helpful and these three questions that you have are marked in red and you must remember them all the time because these questions are the answers to your problems and your solutions in cloudrail and here i have mentioned the link for the newly added services support for cloudrail you can check them out and the best thing about using cloudrail as like other services in AWS is that there's no charge for using CloudTrail. You will pay for the usual S3 and SNS charges to store the data and to receive the notification. That's it. Now you tell me, why shouldn't people use this service? It's very good, isn't it? So I hope this was clear. Let's move on. So now let's see some of the AWS partner tools for log analytics. So I'm not sure how many of you have used some of these applications before, but uh, so we have second watch, we have alert logic, we have boundary, we have stack driver, we have we have Splunk, we have sumo logic and much more. So I have used Splunk for log processing with SNS and it's really good. Splunk has an awesome interface. The search and reporting feature gives very good log analysis features and you can as well create alerts and dashboards with Splunk. So it's very good. So if you guys feel we should do a series on Splunk, then do let me know. I can make a series on Splunk as well. If you do want that, then please put your suggestions in the comment section below. Then I'll get some idea whether to move forward with that or not. Okay, so let's move on. Now let's talk about some of the features that we have for AWS CloudTrail. So the first feature then we have is always on and event history. So AWS CloudTrail is always on, which means AWS Cloud is enabled on all the AWS accounts and records your account activity from the start when you have created your account and CloudTrail provides you the historical data of the events that have taken place and helps us to keep track of what's going on with the insights we get with the data points. Second one is multi-region configuration. This is something that most of the people have doubts. So if we can have multiple region logs or not. So yes, with CloudTrail, with aggregated log files in S3, you can get logs from multiple regions to the single S3 bucket for a single account. So that's a relief. So don't worry about this. You have multi-region configuration as well. So third one that we have is log file integrity, validation and encryption. So when we use logs for security validation and audit, we can't afford to have or we can't afford to take a reference from a manipulated data, isn't it? We don't want manipulated data. We want secure data which has not been tweaked or not been compromised. And CloudTrail actually ensures that logs we have with us remain unchanged, not modified, or deleted as CloudTrail delivers them to the S3 bucket. And CloudTrail actually uses SHA-256 for hashing and SHA-256 with RSA for digital signing to secure the logs. And CloudTrail actually makes it secure enough that the logs can never be edited without detection. And we can use uh, SSC and KMS for encryption as well. So that's one more added advantage for us. And the fourth one that we have is CloudTrail Insights. So with CloudTrail Insights, we can identify unusual activity in our AWS account. Uh, so Insight means that you are trying to have an accurate and deep understanding of the activity that takes place in the resource, isn't it? So with this, we can monitor activities such as spikes in resource provisioning, bursts of AWS uh, identity and access management actions, and these are a few features of CloudTrail, but mostly it is used for monitoring and auditing. But you might ask me, okay, if this is also monitoring, then what is the difference does it have with CloudWatch? I hear you for this and let's talk about that now. So we discuss a lot, but our investigation is still going on. So on one hand, we have CloudTrail, which tells us who is doing what. And on the other hand, CloudWatch tells us why something is going wrong. And these two might appear to be similar, but if you look at the bigger picture, both of them help us in very different ways. So let's see what exactly each of them has to offer. So if you see both the process diagrams, 
uh, both of the services appears to be similar considering the pillar structures with cloud trail if you see we have capture store act and review so where we actually capture the logs based on the api calls made in the aws account and we store them in s3 which we can make use for creating cloudwatch alarms and events in the act phase and the same data points can be used to analyze using aws athena but most importantly we use cloud trail for auditing and that's why it is mentioned here aws cloud trail is a service that enables governance compliance operational auditing and risk auditing of your aws account remember this very carefully of your aws account i'm repeating this like i have repeated this 10 times i think but just try to remember this with these audit process you can measure the integrity of the data and the process that is being followed and the operational audit is something that we use in all fairness when we have a network in place so just remember that AWS Cloud Trail is a service that enables governance, compliance, operational auditing, and risk auditing of your AWS account. On the other hand, we have AWS Cloud Watch. So AWS Cloud Watch collects monitoring and operational data in the form of logs, matrices, and events, and visualizes it using automated dashboards. So we have already covered Cloud Watch. So if you haven't seen that video, then I would request you to please watch it. And it's rightly a monitoring service for AWS resources and application, whereas CloudTrail is a service that records API call events in the AWS account. So that's one of the biggest differences that we have here. So the difference is rightly visible here as well. Like understand one thing very clearly. If I ask you, I need some information about how the application is performing in an EC2 instance, you will tell me for sure that i'll have a cloudwatch integrated and i'll make use of the cloudwatch logs and the event matrices and i will show you how it is performing that's what your answer should be or it will be but on the other hand if i ask you i need to see what are the operations being performed by the users and what are the activities going on in our aws account so here you will tell me that i have the cloud trail data and i can show the operational status of our aws account for any time period that you want so that's your valid response, isn't it? And that's the difference which each of these services provide. So I hope you are getting the point here. If I ask you, can I use CloudTrail for hybrid architectures? You might get confused, isn't it? But if I ask you this about CloudWatch, so you'll be very sure you can use CloudWatch monitoring on on-premises as well, isn't it? But having said that, we can use CloudTrail on on-premise by using third-party AWS partner applications. And that's the actual point here. So remember that CloudWatch is used for analyzing application logs, whereas CloudTrail is used to analyze the information on what is going on in your AWS account. So I hope you are clear with this. So now let's do a small hands-on demo to actually see what we can do with CloudTrail. So let's get started off with the demo and this will be a very simple hands-on to see what are the features that CloudTrail actually provides. So once you log into your AWS management console, just go and search for CloudTrail. So you have uh, the search bar here. You can just click here and type CloudTrail. And once you're here, just click on this. So this is the default page. And the first page that is a default page for CloudTrail will be like this. So AWS CloudTrail helps you to continuously log your AWS account activity. And that's what we need to remember while making our decisions on AWS CloudTrail. So here we have our four pillars that I had already mentioned. Capture, Store, Act, Review, which makes up for the process of using CloudTrail. So now having said this, the first thing to get started with CloudTrail is to create a trail. If you remember, I told you before about what is a trail. So it gives you a path with enough clues to make assured decisions. So here as well, we need to identify the things that are going on in our AWS account, isn't it? So the first step for us is to create the trail. So just click on this. So here you have to keep two things in mind. So first thing is that logs are sent to an S3 bucket. So if you don't have any bucket as of now, it will create one by default. To choose a different bucket or additional bucket, we need to choose the full create trail workflow. If you click on create trail workflow, it will give you a full workflow of this one. But this is the basic way to create a cloud trail. So the first way is to use the default process where you just add the cloud trail name and the trail bucket and the folder it creates so that the, all the logs that are being sent are sent to this. And the second option is to click on create trail workflow and follow the whole step to customize. So let's click on this. So here that you get the full workflow for creating a trail and you need to enter the trail name, enter a display name for your trail. So we can just like type 
demo hyphen trail and then choose a storage type so you can create a bucket to store logs for the trail or you can choose an existing bucket to store logs for this trail so i will choose like this option the first option because i don't have anything any bucket as of now so i can just create a new s3 bucket and we can enable log file encryption using ssc kms encryption this is for your server side encryption using key management service but for that you will have to provide the kms key and both kms keys and s3 bucket must be in the same region but now i won't use it i'll just show you how the logs will be so i'll not be creating that so i'll not enable this i'll just disable this and you can enable log file validation as well by clicking on this one like uh, enabled you can just click the checkbox and next you can enable your sns notifications to create some actions like sending mails or messages or executing some operations so if you enable this you need to create a new sns topic or use an existing one so if i just click on enabled so it will give me two options either i can choose an existing one or i can create a new one i'll not do this now last but not the least you can enable log monitoring using cloudwatch and cloudwatch log groups so if you have an existing log group you can use it else you can create a new one so if i just click on enabled so i can choose new to create a new log group or i can use a uh, existing one by clicking on this so this is my new log group that i want to create and uh, i don't have any im rules as of now to give it to cloud trail for the cloud watch so i have to create a new one here as well so that is what like for making use of cloud trail you need permissions to send trail events to the cloud watch log groups so you can create an im rule or use an existing one so i'll so i'll just create a new one so just click on new and if you expand this let's look at the policy so there are two things here that you will notice while reading policies the first one is action and the other one is a resource so always see statements so statements will be list of actions and resources so this will be the action and this will be the resource so if you see here the policy has two statements with action log create log stream and with the resource that we have that is for cloud trail to manage the creation of the cloud watch log stream and the other one is log put log events so here this is the one the action that we have so there's the next action that we have the put log events on the cloud trail so which helps to push the trail events that's all lastly put the key and the value and add your tags that you want if you want to add any tags you can add it I don't want to i can just click on next okay i forgot to give the name sorry demo cloudwatch underscore trail so using cloud trail to create the trail does not cost anything but the features and the resources that you are going to use right now while creating the trail or will be chargeable just remember that so the second phase is to choose log events so there are three type of log events that AWS offers to be captured and it's not like you have to choose one out of three. It's more like you can enable all of them as well. So there are three type of events that are mentioned here that you want to log. So the first one is management events. Second one is data events. And the third one is insights events. So let's understand this. So the first one is the management event. So management event actually captures management operations such as API usage that are performed on resources in your AWS account. So like who logged in and at what time, who signed in and those type of API calls. And you have to remember that by default, AWS Cloud Trails log all management events, but does not include data or Cloud Trail inside events. Remember this management events are logged by default by Cloud Trail. So the second one is data events. Actually, actually, this shows the resource operations performed on or within a resource such as when a user has uploaded a file on s3 bucket or did it delete it or when did it download it these type of operations the third one is insight events by default trails do not log insight events cloud trail insights actually help you to identify and respond to unusual activity associated with right api calls so it actually helps you to identify pattern based behavioral changes with the api calls uh, made in the aws account which appears to be unusual in nature and you have to understand that the first copy or trail that you create by selecting management events, that tracking is free, which means if you have only one trail with management event, then that will be free. But the second trail, if you have management event selected, then it will be chargeable. So if you just now created one trail and you have selected management events, so that will be free of cost. 
but if you create a second event and you have management event in that as well then that will be chargeable but these two the data events and the insight events will always be chargeable so you can choose any one of these as per your requirements and create the trail so let's choose management events so i think that is chosen by default so here you can see it has been rightly mentioned here no additional data uh, apply to log management events on this trail because this is your first copy of the management events so here we can choose read and write activities and uh, these events that you choose here will be captured as a part of the log files in the s3 bucket so just choose read and write and just click on next so now just review and then confirm the details to create your trail so if you see here i hope you remember what we had already discussed before in console so when you create a trail in the console by default the multi-region trail is enabled so here as well you need to remember one thing very clearly if you have created your trail and you've enabled cloud trail events on your cloud trail wait and allow up to 36 hours for the first insight events to be logged after you create your trail because insights events are logged only when cloud trail actually detects unusual write api activity so it might take some time but here we are creating the management event so it doesn't matter it will be tracked immediately but if you are creating with insight events then wait for or allow up to 36 hours for the first insight events so don't panic just if you are using insight events please wait for around 36 hours and that's all now just click on create trail and let's wait for the magic to happen So now your trail is created. So multi-region trail is enabled. We have the name, the demo trail that we have here. The home region is Asia Pacific. The insights events are disabled. Organization trail is disabled. Now there's the cloud trail event log that we are capturing here. There's the S3 bucket. So you can just right click on this and we can see the S3 bucket created. So that's a very good thing for us. And if suppose you want to use this cloudwatch log group you can just go here or you can go to cloudwatch log groups you will find a log group created there so we can just see that as well so let's see what exactly it is showing us so just go to cloudwatch so what we can do is first we can see the amazon s3 part and then we'll go to the cloudwatch part so if you see here we have aws logs and these are the two cloud trail folders so this is the cloud trail digest and this is the cloud trail so if you can click on cloud trail you can see ap south 1 2021 01 15 and this is the log that we have so now we can go to cloudwatch now and we'll go to log groups so there will be a log group that will be created for us that will be our cloud trail log group this one so retention policy that we have here is never expired so this is the default retention policy and you can just click on this so this is the log stream and these are the events that are being captured so these are the events that are being captured and these are very sensitive information i cannot show you everything so that's why i'm hiding all these things so these are logs that you're going to see here so these are the things that actually are the management events so I can I cannot show you but you can try this as well and you will be able to uh, see what are the actions that we are going to have here and what are the logs that we are getting here. Th same thing that we will get here as well but these are in the json.gz format. So if I want I can just uh, download this. So there's a folder. Yeah so this is the json that we get. So this can be actually queried. So this is the place where you can actually use these AWS S3 buckets to query your data that you want for your cloud trail or, or else you can go back to the CloudWatch log groups and you can go to the log streams that you have here and you can view the insights as well or the logs as well. So that's one thing that you can do or that actually depends on what your requirement is and based on which you can generate reports, you can create alarms, but we are not going to do this right now because this will be a considerable overhead. I just wanted to show you how you can create your cloud trail. So that's it for the demo, I think. So we can just clean up everything that we had. So here I can just click on this and I can delete the trail that I have. So you will no longer receive log files for this trail. Log files that were already delivered to the S3 buckets are not deleted until and unless you delete them. So even if I delete the trail, the S3 bucket will be there. 
so i need to clean up that as well so just click on delete so my trail is deleted and the next thing that i want to do is i want to clean up the s3 bucket that we have and the cloudwatch log groups just click on this and just uh, just select this and just click on delete yeah so permanently delete and just click on empty so it will empty your bucket and you can just exit this and you can delete this just copy this bucket name paste it delete go to cloud watch go to log groups and just select this and actions and delete log group just refresh this so now you're good to go so today we learned how to create cloud trails and i hope you enjoyed this session so that was it for the demo i hope you enjoyed the session that we had today if you did please make sure that you like the video it really helps your channel and if you're new you're most welcome and please do subscribe so that i get a second chance from you to provide you the better content that i have in the future so if you would like to support this channel then please hit the like button comment on what you liked what you didn't and please do subscribe if you haven't already so stay safe stay healthy i'll meet you in the next session of aws i promise you that until next time it's pythonic signing off